Good afternoon. It's Radio 1. We started this a few weeks ago then. It's the autumn term and we created something called Secret Teacher where we wanted to find out what it's like to be a teacher in the first term. Maybe you are a newly qualified teacher. And this will really ring true to you. Because I imagine it's really scary. This is the whole reason why we did this. So I just was thinking, yeah, fair enough. It's horrible when you start school as a snotty little 11-year-old and you're doing secondary school. And it's scary because there's all big people around. But imagine you're sort of 21, a newly qualified teacher. The sick formers, they're not much, not much younger than you. So you feel quite intimidated. So we started this thing called Secret Teacher and we scoured the land and with a bit of persuasion we found a teacher who's willing to share with you exactly how they feel during their first year as a newly qualified teacher. The identity of this teacher will remain anonymous. Some names and details have been changed to avoid detection and the voice is an actor. Well, it's not an actor, it's someone from the office upstairs. But most importantly, these are the words of a real teacher. Last time on Secret Teacher, this time a week ago, we were introduced to the word drop game, where teachers have to drop in certain words to as many conversations with pupils, parents, senior staff members as possible during the week, and they get points for how good the words are. Our teacher was chuffed because on her first go, she managed to drop the word cowabunga during a year six open evening, which is pretty good. The head of house won the game by dropping a whole S Club 7 lyric in assembly. And he was given the title of hero. Our teacher also discovered that a pupil's mum was a gladiator from the hit 90s TV show Gladiators and is now dubious about being hit over the head with an oversized cotton bud in the jewel section of the show. So how did the fourth week go as a brand new teacher? This is week four of Secret Teacher. I've done the most appalling thing ever. I don't think I can even look at myself in the mirror. It was, however, hilarious. Okay. This is this week's instalment. What on earth happened? Let me set the scene. So it's just a regular day at school and 7A turn up to PSHE. This is a lesson where they discuss real life and are taught useful skills such as how to write a check. Basically, it's a bit of a DOS. Oh, we had that. It was general studies. They make you just watch videos and they get speakers in to talk to you about stuff. And this is Michael. He runs a care home. Oh, brilliant. Hour and a half doing nothing. Now, little Harry, you may remember him as the gas tap toucher. He was particularly active and would not seem to settle. I walked over to where Harry was entertaining his peers. He had moulded some plasticine into a phallic shape and was attempting to shove said plasticine up his nose, <laughs> much to the delight of his audience. As I approached, something awful happened. Oh, Harry's up to his tricks again. What happened? My tummy took an almighty turn. Oh my God. Please don't. Please don't say it's... Being a teacher means you have little opportunity to be picky about your meals. For lunch that day, I had only managed to grab a rather suspicious-looking curry pot from the canteen. There's no delicate way to say this. But I dropped the smelliest fart in the world. Oh, God. Why is she trying to make it sound sexy? It's not the M&S advert. <laughs> I dropped the smelliest. This is not just a normal fart. This is a Marks and Spencer's fart. <laughs> Farts and Spencer's. Okay. Sorry, back to the story. Luckily, it was absolutely silent. So there was no indication to the kids that it was me. However, to cover my back, I did the most appalling thing. I blamed Harry. <laughs> of course you did. Because you're a terrible, terrible teacher. I still feel guilty now. <laughs> I didn't exactly point and laugh, but I did casually ask if he needed to go to the toilet, <laughs> by which time the children had detected the horrendous smell and drawn their own conclusions. Yeah, what on earth? I've already got the potential nickname of Sweaty Betty. I can't exactly add Trumpy Sue to the list as well. No, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be Sue, it should be, it should be alliteration, it should be Trumpy Tina or something. This is what terrible. This is a, this is this has been a, a bad week to be that teacher. Rule seven: 
do not eat from the school canteen as it will only result in flatulence. <laughs> this must be quite a posh school because they have a curry pot for lunch. <laughs> That's quite... We just had... Two, we, lucky if you had three scoops of mash at my school and it would always be mash given out in ice cream scoops. And the woman would always go, do you want another scoop of mash? Do you want three? Oh yeah, I'd love three. You want three? Do three for ya. Anyway, that was it. Instalment four of Secret Teacher. What on earth's going to happen next week? I can't wait to find out. When all of your Matt on the M1 says, I thought that Secret Teacher was supposed to be anonymous. How many teachers have a child whose mum was on Gladiator, says Matt? Well, well I was, you're probably right. Forget about that. Matt in Southampton, I often drop farts next to students I really dislike. Smiley face. That's kind of, isn't that kind of weird. Is that, is that, that's abuse. That's a bit weird, isn't it? We've got Kerry, who says, I love hearing about your school days, Greg, because my little boy is at your old school in year nine at the moment. And I will warn him about general studies. And the thing about general studies, there were some brilliant people who used to get in to talk, but there was always that one. It would be like, well, this is Brian, and he um, started his own business. Um, he, <laughs> he delivers vans. Yeah, oh, cool. cool. And like, but Because everyone's sitting there going, oh, this is brilliant. I've had boring maths. I've got an hour and a half to do nothing. So I just sit there and just sit there on my phone. Because my old school asked me to go and talk in, the, in general studies about getting into radio and stuff but I really want to because I think there'll be some people who find it interesting mildly but the majority of people would be sat there and they'd be thinking oh god this guy shut up because that's what I was like I don't know